the real Rabbi uncle was actually talking about seven parties. Even I never bothered to know more about it. <laughs> so, he yes, is my therapist, and I still remember he actually broke my leg because I used to work a little more awkward when I was a young boy and he told me, no, you walk straight, walk straight. And the awareness that I got in my mind helped me to walk more stable. Okay? Uh, let me ask you something. Yesterday, I was having a dinner with Rose and other speakers. And uh, I asked Rose, how do you define disability? Or, how do you define normal? Frankly speaking, to me, normal means being myself. <laughs> that's, that's it. I don't need to become aware that I'm normal because I am what I, I am what I am. All right, uh, let, let me ask all of you to just uh, say, open your heart and open your mind and just link with my heart so that you will feel something from me, okay? Yes? yes? All of you are open up. Yes. All of you are open up. Yes, yes sir. Yes. A little louder. Yes. Thank you. How do I operate my PPT? Okay, you help me. Sure. Right? Please forgive me for showing too many pictures, but this is not my idea. This is my friend's idea, and I'm just doing what my friend wanted me to do. Uh, to me, save me is not a disease, right? It's not a mental retardation, like how the doctors labeled me when I was born and, and nobody could understand what my, what my problem is and they just openly declared um, Mentally retarded. Next slide. No education till nine years. I think that is too much of a gap. How many of you started education at the age of four or five years? All of you? Come on guys, wake up! Hey, hey! I'm not here to give you a lecture. Okay? That's why I said open your heart and open your mind. Okay? Right. Um,
for me, I felt, or I would rather say, I feel more fortunate that I was able to be mom for nine years without going out. And that is my most memorable moment being with my mom under her care. There is nothing more bigger than that. All right. Uh, I don't know whether Timutra, Timutra is here. Yeah, that's it. Right? Um, the, the reason why I borrowed her name was she was my neighbor and she pulled me into the society of Karnataka. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll make you more popular. <laughs> okay. And uh, so the teachers realized that I can write and they put me on a typewriter. Can you imagine doing a long multiplication sum on a typewriter? <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I did it. And, and when, I, when I did it, my math teacher came and asked to do. How do you do it? I can't, I can't, I can't believe you. <laughs> All right. Huh? Thanks to the efforts of my teachers, I was able to complete my six, seven, and eight in just one and a half years. Okay? And, uh, and this happened in Chennai because my dad got transferred and I had to join a similar school over here. A oh, lot of hard work from my teachers more than me because normally a student will feel the pressure of an exam, right? But, but I did not feel even one percent of the pressure <laughs> because, because the entire pressure was taken by my teachers, <laughs> right? Uh, all right, uh, next slide. Then came a time when the teachers felt that I must go to a normal school. Now, that is where the challenge lied. Because, uh, imagine you are in a closed room for about 10 years and then suddenly you come out of the room. Won't you feel scared? Or won't you feel emotionally insecure? Yes? yes. I think I also felt the same thing. <laughs> because suddenly, out of nowhere, I saw 100 students like me around me. And I didn't know what to do with them. But believe me, that is, that is where my journey started. That is where my world actually opened up. And this is what is known as inclusion. Right? And, and that is what my teachers believe that I can be included easily. And so they put me in normal school. All right. My exams, I stopped typing 
and then I started using scribes. Um, the challenge with the scribe is people who come to write my exam do not know my subject. <laughs> so you just imagine doing a, 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 a account paper with a science graduate. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's very easy? All right, boss, by the time I explain my scribe, what is the account three years should have got over? <laughs> but, but that is where my challenge lies. At a very young age, I have to take in a lot of pressure. Pressure to perform, the pressure to survive, the pressure to prove myself consistently. Break all the barriers to make sure that I am a part of the people in the school or in the college. And the process is not a very easy process. Emotionally, you can get blocked out. And there were times when I wanted to give up my education and just sit at home. But looking at all the support that I got from my family, my teachers, I decided, okay, I will not give up. And and that is where it all happened. And you just look at the last line in my 12. I scored 90 percent, which, which, which a symptom in computer science and 197 in math. And all this was done with people who did not know my subject. <laughs> Next slide, please. Then came my college life. The most funny part of college admission was the principal refused to look at my marks and they were just looking at my body. <laughs> like as if I had something interesting in me. Believe me, my teachers fought for my education. They were convincing the principal, my parents, they fought the principal in a very smooth manner to ensure that I get admission in a college. And that is where I, I remember, I think that is the only period in my life where I slept a lot. <laughs> Both in class and at home. <laughs> but luckily, my mother did not know that I was sleeping in class. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, she will not allow me to sleep at home. <laughs> okay? So, so that is why I really enjoy it. I enjoy going to movies and then I enjoy doing bunking classes and go home and sleep. <laughs> my goodness. Wish, wish I could do that even in my professional life. <laughs> All right. And um, next slide. I went on to do my BCom and then I did my master's in Economics from Loyola College, fantastic experience for me. I did an economics paper with a science graduate. Okay, again, but I came out with 75 percent in masters, and uh, believe me, I was so proud of my own achievement. So far, and, and, and I felt a little overconfident that I will get a good job. 
but believe me, that was not the case. I went for interview. People were calling me for interviews based on my resume. And first, make sure it doesn't happen in SAP. Okay? <laughs> what I'm going to tell now. <laughs> okay? People just look at me up and down. Okay? Without having even one dialogue of conversation. And they say, we'll get back to you. Then why the hell did you call me? <laughs> Very frustrating moments. One, because I was coming with a lot of hope of getting a job. And number two, I was wasting my dad's money as well. My dad is the best investor in my life. Okay? And, and the only return that I could give him is the joy. Lot of joy and lot of happiness which I could give him, which I'm sure my dad would have definitely forgotten how much he has spent on me. <laughs> All right. Uh, but that was the time when I realized that, okay, it's time for me to understand the world. Then expecting the world to understand you. And and that made <laughs> and and that made a lot of difference in my change of my thinking, attitude, everything changed after that. And it so happened that I learned the importance of tolerance, patience of course, getting angry is all part of life. But again, you can't get angry in a public place. Right? Because the reason is, even if I get angry in a public place, people will look at me as a mentally retarded guy. Nobody is bothered about why am I getting angry or what is it that causing me anger. And that will hurt me even more. So, I have to learn to be patient and calm. Let me give you a good example over here. When I go to an auto, okay? When I, when, I, when I go for an auto, to pick up an auto, the driver will look at me from top to bottom, like as if I am some chessy object. Believe me, it, it drives me nuts. Why the hell is the auto guy looking at me from top to bottom like that? You sometimes feel like slapping the other guy. Which I'm sure any woman would have done that. <laughs> yes, that is where I learned patience, tolerance, lots more. At a very young age, not close. You can just have a look at it. I don't have anything much to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. All right. Uh, then came a big break. Uh, the most wonderful moment of my life of getting a job. I got a job in Ibn Ambro, which is now RBS. And the most beautiful part of that, uh, getting a job, was that the HR people were actually listening to me, which did not happen in any of my previous interviews. And because they listened to me for 40 minutes, okay, that they were happy to hire me. And I challenge them that I don't want a data entry job. I want a job that fits my mind and that makes my mind work more than my body. And that makes a lot of difference. 
they were equally open. They, they put me into dot set. Dot set is a trade finance product whereby you are supposed to check documents against a lot of credit. And, and if you make one blunder in that, the bank will lose a lot of money. Believe me. Okay, it's a very risky job. <coughs> and for me, I had my own additional challenges because my body keeps dancing all over the place without my knowledge. And yet, I am expected to operate in a computer, check documents, analyze documents, and much more. But yes, there is one place where I gave my mind the maximum work. I cleared CDCS. CDCS is the global exam, and, and I think I was just 10 months into my job. And, um, and, and when I passed the exam, only 54% globally had passed the exam. <laughs> and that was the time when the whole people around me in office were all celebrating my passing the exam because they had all taken a decision that was not 100% pakka. Yes, and that was an eye-opener for them as well, right? Because that the time they came to know my talent. All right, um, I worked in RBS for five and a half years, and then I thought, okay, I think I. I have hung on too much with organization and it's time to move on so that I test myself in a different environment, uh, especially, especially coming out of a comfort zone. I think few years will know what it means to come out of comfort zone consistently to go higher. Yes? Yes? Yeah, I think that's what I also had in mind. And, 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 and I, I joined Indusind Bank about two and a half years, got promoted last year, and, and now I'm looking after the unit for Indusind Bank. Uh, this is a very beautiful moment for me, meeting Abdul Kalam sir almost five times in five years. <laughs> That, that one beautiful lesson which I learned from meeting Kalamji was no matter how high you go, always remember that you are a human being. And and that is the human touch which he gave me every time I met him. And that's a wonderful moment for me. Next slide. The Jong Award is definitely an honor to get award, but today I realize that these awards are not going to take me anywhere. Okay? <laughs> and even, even if I mention it in my CV, or in my profile, or anything. I don't think it will add much value to me, other than the fact that I get a little excited on, on receiving the award, nothing else, nothing more than that. <laughs> These are all my other activities which I keep doing, and uh, the most important thing is that I keep contributing for more people like me in terms of consultancy and then in terms of, I mean, opinion, opinion matters, right? And I keep giving a lot of my opinion for them. 
Next slide. These are all my press clippings. My God, you have no idea how I got shared by the media at, at one point of time. <laughs> all right, and this is previous slide. This is one area where a lot of articles have been written, but, uh, but I'm still yet to find the best article. Because, because for me, maybe Hatsha Burger will do it over there. <laughs> <laughs> I am your fan, okay? I am your fan, big time fan. <laughs> okay? Uh, the reason, the reason why I mentioned that was that when you are writing an article about a human being, always have a human touch. But many people, but many people don't realize and they label me disabled, differently able, stable party, mentally tired, so many things, sometimes I get really mad at reading my own article. But at the same time, I also learned to be equally tolerant that I will not comment anything on that. So that I don't hurt the people who are doing something for them and me. Next slide. These are all my good photos which I have taken over the last two years as a speaker. And my, and my recent adventure was at, was at the World Bank in Chennai where, where I went then which is a very tough audience, one of the most toughest audience that I have ever addressed because people are all CA, MBA, all money-minded, work-minded. <laughs> how, how can I get them involved in my talk? And that was a very huge challenge, but ultimately, towards the end, I saw everybody was smiling over there. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> okay, next slide. This is just a thought from my side. Uh, I mean, I have nothing to comment on this, but... Um, What gives me more joy in fighting my own battle is that I make a lot of people happy around me. And because, and because I am able to bring so much of happiness to so many people that I keep my life going. I think that is what drives me forward. Not to let down people who have supported me. And, that's a, and that has become a very important philosophy in my life. Next slide. This is where I am available at Facebook. You can find me online on 24 hours on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next slide. Before I, before I say the two words that is there on my slide, let me just conclude like this. Of course, you have seen almost half of the collection of my photos over there. But uh, many times, we don't realize what we are or what kind of talent we have. Or many times we don't even realize whether you are a human being or whether you are a workaholic or whether you are alcoholic or that and this. For me, through my struggles, I have realized the importance of being a very good human being. And, and there is nothing that gives you more joy 
okay, other than giving somebody a human touch. With that, uh, I'm concluding my talk. Hope that uh, this summit will definitely become the world's biggest summit in the next three years. A wonderful, a wonderful vision from uh, a great leader, and uh, and hope all of you will continue to join us in 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 events like this, and uh, give us more and more support. When I say support, I don't mean take care of me, right? For example, I I I invited uh, Ramesh Nagri. Are you there, sir? Yeah, he's a very senior person working in Deutsche Bank. He's a very close friend of mine, and the reason and the reason why I invited him is to give him moral support. And and uh, and. I didn't call him because I wanted his help. It's a very nice feeling to have my support more than any other support. And that's all that matters in life. Thank you guys. <laughs>